Hey everybody, it's Derek here. We're going to take a look at the news from the 27th of September to the 3rd of October 2021. So, not a whole lot of news, but Tokyo Game Show was on this week, so we did get a couple of new trailers and game announcements and stuff. Um, nothing massively new. It's, Tokyo Game Show is mostly targeted at Japanese um, markets. Oh, it's a lot of games that we kind of already knew about, but they're just kind of showing them off for Japan more or less. But one thing we did get a look at now is um, Gungrave Gore, which is the latest entry to Gungrave. Now, to be honest, I don't have, I'm not super familiar with Gungrave, but this trailer is hilarious. <laughs> it's just really fucking stupid. So I kind of feel like I need to play it. And then looking at the gameplay, I'm kind of like, why have I never played Gungrave? Because it looks kind of cool. So here's like a coffin, I guess, you know, grave and all. And then there's the gun part you'll see in a minute. We got this this coffin that's just come out of outer space. <laughs> but the, there was a dude in us who uh, <laughs> snaps the guy's neck. It's fucking hilarious. And of course, the coffin transformed into a giant gun. And he also has he also has guns. This game is kind of ridiculous, basically. It's kind of very over the top anime, very gory, also, but sort of like cartoonish levels of it. So it's not like you know you're not gonna throw up or anything. It's you know cartoon violence, I guess. That's per perfectly fine. We'll skip ahead to a bit of gameplay. So as you can see, it is very um, high pace. Um, shooter type over the shoulder kind of shooter kind of over the shoulder i suppose it's pulled back a little bit so it's got it's still got a little bit of like devil may cry kind of stuff to it like brawler kind of things going on so you know you're not exactly picking your shots or anything like that he, he shoots fast enough that it's it, it kind of feels more like a melee game even though it's a shooter ostensibly if that makes if that makes any sense whatsoever uh but yes i know very little about gungrave other than it is kind of ridiculous Anyway, there's a bit of the, the newest entry. It's coming next year at some point, and that's about all we know about it right now. Uh, then Capcom also had a small event that was kind of showing off a lot of Monster Hunter stuff. So they were showing off a bit of Monster Hunter Rises' next um, expansion pack, which is called Sunbreak. Um, and there's a little bit of that in this trailer, but I also wanted to show off this in particular because this is the PC version of Monster Hunter Rise so it's going to have a lot of a lot of improvements that are kind of holding back the Switch version and basically it's of course graphical fidelity um, so like textures resolution frame rate all of that kind of stuff it's just going to be so much better on the PC and that's kind of all that's holding back Monster Hunter Rise is that it just doesn't look as good as Monster Hunter World but with all of these improvements it would so some, some good shit happening there um, and then there is a bit of sunbreak um, in this trailer maybe now oh yeah voice chat the switch doesn't fucking have voice chat which is kind of ridiculous when you're trying to uh, strategize against these monsters because some of them are tricky enough uh, you definitely need help when are they going to get to the sunbreak bit alright never mind it's here somewhere anyway what's really important though is that, uh, here's the sunbreak bit. So we've got this dragon that's basically a Harrier jet, <laughs> just, which is fucking nuts. And obviously, um, the red probably didn't look that great on this video, and that's because YouTube just hates red. YouTube compression destroys uh, the color red. It hates it. Any game that has red in it, it ends up looking awful. As I was going to say, the most important part about the fact that Monster Hunter Rise is going to be on PC that you'll be able to export the you know, and Minoa models out to SFM and do things. Things with them. Moving on. <laughs> but the biggest one, the biggest uh, news from Tokyo Game Show was of course Killing Chaos. We get, we get another look at, at the boys Killing Chaos. So 35th Final Fantasy Anniversary will be next year. Um, and it looks like they're lining up uh, Stranger of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origins, and or the Chaos game to be released around the same time. So we got a pretty moody trailer with Garland here. It was the, one of the early bosses of Final Fantasy 1. Maybe the main boss of Final Fantasy 1? Long fucking time since I've played that game, so I don't know. Entirely possible. 
Um, so fairly moody trailer, but it did show off the fourth party member, Neon. Um, so it looks like these three characters, the three that were in the original demo, are like have been pulled into this world. It's a bit of an isekai thing, and Neon is actually from here, and they could sort of give um, info. But then, of course, there's a lot more gameplay stuff here. They showed off a lot more um, weapon sets. So there was like the double swords, there was um, pugilist fisticuffs, and there was a sword and shield build there, all shown off. Also a new area. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, and then a bit of story stuff that's not in the demo. And we got this pirate looking guy. He's probably a boss by the looks of things. So there is a second demo now available right now if you wanted to get it. It's on PS5. I think. I think just PS5. Um, and it's this new area. Sorry. It's the original demo plus a new area. There's an extra mission and an extra side mission along with it. There's a bunch of new weapon sets and things like that. So it's definitely fleshed out a lot more. Um, still plays much the same. Uh, I haven't seen too many changes to how the game actually plays. But there is, I think, a new difficulty setting. So there's two new difficulty settings for easier or harder. And then there's an even, even more easier version called casual mode, which practically plays the game for you. <laughs> um, the new area is kind of interesting because and this has been mentioned in a couple of different articles, but I did notice it myself playing the demo. It feels a very Final Fantasy 13. Like, it has a similar um, weather switching mechanic that was in Final Fantasy 13, and it has a very similar music. Like, like there are there are beats to the background music that sound like they're from Final Fantasy 13, and I am kind of curious where they're going with that. Because if there's a if there's a thing that we're gonna bring in all the Final Fantasies into this game, then that will be nuts. I probably don't think it's that way. I think maybe they were just hearkening back to it and just being like, yeah, we know this weather switching thing is from there, so let's just put it in. But I don't know. It looks pretty good. Um, I, 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 I'm not sure if I'm going to play the demo for the channel again, the second demo, because the game's hard. <laughs> like, and it's frustrating enough. Uh, if you watched the first video, you'll know I had a bit of trouble with the boss. Um, and I don't really want to do that again for a second boss. That's also kind of hard. <laughs> and a third boss that's also kind of hard. Um, is the, there's a third side mission that uh, basically has the two bosses back to back. And that's that's, pr that's pretty hard, man. That's pretty, pretty fucking tough. Okay. Um, small update here. Small, but also sort of um, megaton is... Um, Resident Evil 4 VR, uh, it will be out soon. It'll actually be out this month, a couple of weeks. Um, so there's a trailer kind of reminding you, and unfortunately it's also reminding you that it is exclusive to the Oculus Quest 2, which is the thing. The Oculus Quest is a good machine, because it's like a standalone VR thing that's actually pretty decent. Um, it can have, like, it's got pretty decent specs. The problem is it's so intrinsically tied to Facebook that I don't want to touch it. But I really want to play Resident Evil, Resident Evil 4 on VR. So here is a video from, um, sorry, I'll start from the start. This is a video from uh, IGN. They did a hands-on preview of the VR title itself. So it's a bit longer, does a bit of gameplay and it shows off some of the features and some of the changes. So the actual game is played like VR first person, um, a lot of your inventory is actually on your belt at most of the time. Uh, so you can like change weapons by just grabbing them off your body more or less. If you need to reload, you gonna you have to do it in real time. Pick up the magazine and put it into the gun, which is going to be nuts. <laughs> because Resident Evil 4, well, it starts off kind of straightforward. The mobs get pretty aggressive later on in the game. So that's going to be interesting. Puzzle mechanics are also done, like, tactile, but one of the kind of, like, I get why they did it, but it's still not great, is that cutscenes break off into this kind of theater mode instead. And it's not just cutscenes, as you'll probably notice later on in this video, if you watch the whole thing. Um, if you get grabbed and you have to do, like, a shake-off mechanic or something like that, that also 
drops out into theater mode. Um, if Leon climbs a ladder, that drops off into theater mode and so on. Basically, any of the times where um, control was taken away from the player or locomotive, that will say locomotive control was taken away from the player, um, they're going to drop off into theater mode, which is kind of shit, really. Like, it's understandable why it's done. Because they'd have to, like, redo all the cutscenes, basically, for VR, which would be a nightmare. This is obviously a bit... They're focusing... Like, the primary thing they're focusing on here is the gameplay. It's kind of cool that saving, you actually have, a like, a fully usable typewriter, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Um, puzzles and stuff, you'll also be doing, like, pressing the buttons individually, picking up the items individually, and so on. But as you see here, when he climbs the ladder, it actually breaks off into a theater mode, which is kind of shit. Um, jumping out is a break off. That's kind of odd, actually. Him jumping out of the window was a sort of halfway between theater mode thing. Um, what they are pointing out here in this video is that... Um, well, there is like a proper push to move locomotion um, that the game is so frantic that you're probably going to want to use teleporting just just because you're going to be moving so much. Um, it, it just it might help with the motion sickness, which is obviously a big problem for VR titles in general, is that your brain is telling you one thing, but your body is telling you something else and you don't know what what's what's what. And that's where the motion sickness comes from. Um, the teleporting and the vignetting kind of helps in that, but not always. <laughs> Doesn't always work. Uh, yeah, Gigante is probably going to be a bit of a nuts um, feeling with him being so big. I definitely remember the, the Batman VR title um, where Killer Croc is in front of you and he is... He's big. <laughs> he's, he's really big. You don't really get the sense when it's like third person, but when it's first person, yeah, he's a big guy. <laughs> he's like really tall and really wide and you're like, oh boy, he's a big dude. Anyway, uh, so yeah, if you uh, happen to own an Oculus Quest 2 and or you can get over the whole gross Facebook stuff, looks like it'll be a good thing, even if the theater mode isn't particularly great, but you know, you, got, you gotta, get, gotta work with it. So it is first of the month, or close to the first of the month, whatever, uh, which means there are new monthly games for PlayStation and Xbox, so we'll look at PlayStation Plus games, which are not great, really. Uh, so we'll look at them here. Hell Let Loose is a multiplayer World War II 100 player craziness thing. I was born on the first of the first fucking 1920. Yes, I'm the oldest man on the planet. I'm just gonna go straight to YouTube anyway to watch this. Anyway, it's a 100 person uh, multiplayer World War II shooter thing. And I don't think this trailer actually has any gameplay. <laughs> so there you go. Not a whole lot to talk about there. Um, so f like 50 50 vehicles and stuff. It's like Battlefield, I suppose, but probably not as polished. PGA Tour, I'm not even gonna click into. It's a golf game. I'm sure you understand what that is. Uh, Mortal Kombat, I am almost certain, I am almost certain Mortal Kombat 10 or Mortal Kombat X was on PS Plus before. And sure, people might have missed the game and you know, games coming back around isn't necessarily a bad thing, just in case you missed it the first time kind of thing. Um, and it kind of, I understand why Warner Bros. will push for it because there's a shit ton of DLC for Mortal Kombat 10. Um, Good game too, but I'm almost certain it's been on PS Plus before. Maybe it hasn't. I haven't checked or anything. I just have a a feeling that it was there. But anyway, so Mortal Kombat 10 and PGA Tour 2021 are the PS4 games, and uh, Hell Let Loose is the PS5 title. Uh, I have no idea what it looks like or what it plays at. I just have zero interest in it. I didn't even bother checking. Um, games with gold. There's no video for this, which is really annoying, Xbox. Why did you put a video for one of them? Like, they, they normally have videos, right? Maybe they don't. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, Aero, or Eero, Aero, I don't know, is a rhythm game, kind of. You're like a spaceship, and you got to press the buttons in the right time kind of thing to music. You get, you get the deal. Hover is a parkour title. It's like the guy, it's like the kids, the punky kids against the establishment sort of thing, but parkour. That's why I kind of call it hover, I suppose, because you're 
bouncing around the place. Castlevania Home in Despair is Castlevania game. It's pretty good. It's like, it's a pretty good Castlevania game, but also the advanced title thing um, on Switch. I'm pretty sure it's included in that, but I don't know. That's, it's games with gold, it's free. You know, why not? Um, and Resident Evil Code Veronica X is the HD remaster of Resident Evil Code Veronica. Um, Code Veronica is not particularly well loved in the Castlevania, or the Castlevania series, definitely wouldn't be well loved in the Castlevania series, in the Resident Evil series, but it's still pretty good. Like, yeah, it's not terrible. Like there are terrible Resident Evil games and Veronica, Code Veronica isn't a terrible game. It's just not as good as the really good Resident Evil games. It's kind of in the middle, it's all right. And it's free, so yeah, give it a shot, whatever. And then actual new releases, um, this week we have Astria Ascending, which is going to be on Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, PC, a bunch of stuff. It's made by some of the original designers and developers of Final Fantasy series. So Final Fantasy is like one to six, I think, by these guys. It looks really nice. Like it's some, so there's some gorgeous art style. Um, the combat, like turn-based combat, looks really, really fun. Um, there have been mentions that it's a bit slow. And that it, like, for it being designed and developed by people from the early Final Fantasies, is that it actually feels like it's from the early Final Fantasies, in that there is, you know, there have been a lot of quality of life improvements in JRPGs, and some of them are just not here in Astria's ending. But to be honest, I am okay with that. <laughs> like, is, there's a reason those games are still played and still well loved, because they're good games, you know. Um, I'm happy to put up with some of that. Maybe game, maybe like players who are like brand new to JRPGs or whatever, and are more familiar with like I don't know Final Fantasy XIV or the later Dragon Quests or something like that. You know, it might be a little bit difficult for them to get in on, but I'd be fine with it. It doesn't bother me. I will probably check that out at some point. Um, away, uh, survival series. Why have I lost control of each? Uh, I actually have no idea how this game plays. I only just wanted to look at it because one, it looks really good, and you play as a sugar glider. This is kind of fun. Um, I don't know. It looks interesting, fighting scorpions and things that are always trying to eat you, and it looks cute. And I don't know. I don't think you're, as you can see here, you're not always playing as a sugar glider. You're playing as different creatures, but. How, like, how much actual gameplay is in us and, and so on, I don't know. Um, I don't know enough about the game. I kind of just saw it on a couple of sizzle reels that Sony have put out a few times, and it just looks, it just looks really good. I don't know how well it actually plays, no idea, but it looks interesting. And then Outer Wilds uh, Echoes of the Eye. I have started playing Outer Wilds and then stopped playing it, and then started playing it and then stopped playing it. So I've kind of gone back and forth with it. Um, I do like it's kind of open-ended exploration stuff, but I also don't like it because <laughs> I'm like, what, where do I fucking go? What is the what is the critical path and so on? Am I missing things? Am I doing something before I'm supposed to do something else? It kind of gets a bit confusing to me. But I won't deny it's a good game. It's, it's very interesting and Echoes of the Eye is just more of it and it has been getting a lot of good press, uh, a lot of good reviews. I haven't looked into any gameplay around it because I don't want to be spoiled, but from what I've seen, people who like Outer Wilds really like Echoes of the Eye as well, so probably something to check out. And if you were unaware that it was out, it's out now on, on all of the platforms that it was already on, I suppose. Okay, it is now time to talk about the worst part of video games video game industry. So there was very briefly news about Activision Blizzard um, last week where they were being um, investigated by the SEC but then kind of thrown in right at the end is that they were also being investigated by the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission and that that investigation had been going on for quite some time. It is actually the commission has been investigating uh, Activision Blizzard from as early as September 2018. So they've been doing this one for quite some time. However, the really, really shit part is that they've settled with Activision Blizzard for a fucking piddling amount of money compared to what Activision Blizzard actually makes. 
so Activision Blizzard has agreed to set aside 18 million dollars for employees who experience harassment and discrimination at the company. Um, claimants who have experienced horrible shit um, can now apply directly to the EEOC, um, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, uh, and they will determine how much they are um, to be awarded and so on. Any leftover money will be donated to charities. Okay, one, yes, they've been held accountable, but two, they've basically just thrown money at it to make the problem go away. Which means nothing's really going to change at the company, like... 18 million dollars, so... 18 million dollars has raised eyebrows among those comparing it to the billions raked in in every year by the publisher. Activision Blizzard last year reported revenues of 8.1 billion dollars. And they just said, uh, here's some money I found behind the couch kind of thing. It's... This isn't justice, basically. Nothing will actually happen to the company. Heads won't roll about it. It's like a almost four year investigation and they got basically nothing. So that's not great. This isn't like people will get money or whatever, but that 18 million won't go very far for all the people it's affected. And it it's not a big enough dent not a dent at all into Activision Blizzard for them to really take any meaningful um, steps to, to, to not have to pay that money again because it's like whatever spend that on lunch for everybody I think it's like this is zero money to us to even 1% so Bobby Cody makes more than that in a year like 10 times or something ridiculous it's that's, that's not justice. Anyway, um, some news on the hate raid stuff from uh, in and around Twitch. So they have made some changes to their um, moderation tools. So they have added phone verification filters to the chat. So the streamers can now insist that people who want to actually chat in, in the chat um, need to have their phone verified as well in addition to their email and so on and there are actually a fair few kind of nuances to the filtering system which is pretty good it's not just a blanket everybody needs to have their phone verified or not kind of thing you can kind of mix and match it creators can use phone verified chat to manage who can talk during broadcasts so Restrictions can be applied to all accounts or can be used to set lighter restrictions such as verification for first time chatters, recent followers or viewers with newly created accounts. Streamers can also have the option to exclude subscribers, mods and VIPs from the rules. So there's a fair bit of um, flexibility in the new system. You can have it so that they have to have their phone verified or they have to have the email verified or they have to have both or one or the other or and so on. Um, and then you can kind of mix and match the roles. So if they've been subscribing you to you for like a year, you're like, okay, they're fine. They probably don't need to have their phone verified and so on. Um, if you haven't had your phone verified, you can find it in like the Twitch settings on your app. Uh, I don't know if you can do it through the web, but you can definitely do it through the mobile app because I have done it recently myself because mine wasn't. Um, so that's from the creator standpoint. There's a kind of new set of tools basically in the back end if you've streamed before you'll probably know where they are but if you don't there's a bunch of like moderation tools and you can just toggle these things on and off um from the user side of things users can link up to five accounts to the same phone number to cater to people who may have more than one twitch account for instance if you have a twitch account where you're a streamer and you have a twitch account where you're a viewer you might want to keep those separate for whatever reason or maybe you have a company twitch account that you manage um and a personal Twitch account and so on. Um, but if one account linked to a number or email address is suspended from a specific channel, all other accounts linked to the same number and email address will be suspended also. So yes, you can have multiple accounts linked, but if one of them fucks up, fucks it up for all of them, basically. Um, these are like, these are good tools. Um, long overdue, but they're good tools. If they then decide to roll that into the actual signup process, that would be better. Because right now the onus is put on the onus is put a little bit too much on the streamer to manage these things, whereas it could be put on Twitch itself in its sign-up process to just have, you know, you. Are, I'm sure all of you have 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 signed up for things and then they've come back to say please verify your email kind of thing. You know, it could easily just throw the same thing in for phone. 
course, the, the issue then is you need to own a phone. Which, no, not everybody's going to own a phone, and it does, um, it does keep people out of the... It does keep people off the platform, which is obviously something Twitch don't, don't want to do, because it would limit the number of new account creations, and they use those kind of metrics to push for investment and that kind of thing, so... It's not always in their best interests to do those things. Sticking with Twitch, they are trialing a horrible <laughs> new thing. Twitch will let viewers pay to advertise their favorite streamers. So this is adding another fucking burden on streamers and viewers. This, their, you know, the the parasocial um, relationship that emerges between these people, and it's just adding another horrible thing. So basically, users can pay money to advertise their favorite streamers. They do this by buying something called a boost. Um, you can buy a number of boosts for a streamer, and each boost will highlight the streamer's channel by adding it as a front page recommendation for another Twitch user. It does not specify if you can specify that Twitch user, how it figures out which Twitch user to give it to, where on the front page it shows up, does it take that user? I'm sure it probably takes that user's like previous history. Do they actually watch these kind of streams? Are they interested in those kind of games or whatever? We don't know because obviously they're not going to tell you that. Um, spokesperson, uh, what we're doing with Boost is giving viewers the ability to buy super high visibility promotions ads for their favorite creators. And these types of placements come with costs, as in you have to pay for it. Um, so the way it's going to work, there's a boost period, right, where you can buy these these boosts you as a viewer can buy these boosts that are can buy these boosts rather that are attached to a particular streamer so i imagine it's probably on their like homepage or whatever there's probably a big button that says get boost um sounds a little bit like discord for their nitro stuff but anyway um during the boost purchase period which is like 10 minutes it's like very short window Community members can pay to make the boost as big as they like, so you can buy as many boosts as you can afford. Um, right now it is not said how much a boost costs. It's, it is real money, you're not paying for it with bits or channel points or whatever. It's, you, like, it is actual money, you'll, you'll have to pay for these. Um, each community member's purchase will add more front page recommendations for that creator. So the more of them you get, I guess the higher up the front page you go. The issue here is that the front page isn't infinite. You know, there is a there is a limit to how many they'll show or how many it's even worth it. Like, I think if the if the user coming to their front page has to scroll at all, probably not worth any money you put into that boost. It's kind of like the same with like Google results. If you have to go past page one, you kind of fucked up <laughs> with your SEO sort of thing. Um, so uh, the spokesperson was kind of pointing out, or maybe was pointed out to them, um, that the boost functionality is very similar to another community challenge that took place last year um, at Christmas, which was um, resulted in, a, in over 100,000 streamer yeah, recommendations was wrong with me today, being purchased. The difference here is that it purchased is in quotes because they weren't like, it, it wasn't real money used in, this, in that um, scenario. These were purchased with channel points, which are just earned by just doing shit on Twitch. Um, which means it's not real money. No, you're not having to fork over real money in that case, so there's no kind of disgusting pay-to-win thing around this. As you can see how this would be abused, right? You'll just get marketing person in on that 10-minute period, buys shit ton of boosts with marketing money or whatever, and just gets their channel put to the top of the list. Like, you can see that happening, no problem. This is scummy. It's also pushing another kind of burden on top of a streamer in that they're already they're already kind of relying on their viewers, right? For like views, for subscriptions, for tips, whatever. Maybe they have a Patreon and so on. They already have that kind of thing, and now they're gonna be like, hey, pay for a pay for a boost for me, yeah? Like and subscribe and boost me. You know, it's, it's another thing that they're going to have to pay attention to. And if they don't opt into it, they know other streamers will opt into it. So you are kind of fucked either way, basically. And really, Twitch should be doing this themselves. Twitch should be going around to notice that people um, 
are in need of promotion. Like they're already saying that this is a response to creators wanting to be wanting to be able to promote basically better than what they already have, which is pretty much putting up a stream in the void and hoping a couple of people see your tweet about it. Like it's not great. YouTube is much the same, only so much worse because <laughs> Uh, like Twitch is primarily gaming stuff, whereas YouTube is, yeah, there's a lot of gaming stuff on YouTube. It's a sizable part of it, but there's also a shit ton of other stuff on YouTube. Um, so getting your view, getting your videos seen. I mean, you can just look down at the views on this video. Like, it doesn't happen. It's not easy to do. Promo Self-promotion is very difficult. Um, it's difficult to stand out from. And Twitch are just kind of making it difficult here because it, this will just cement the people who already have a lot of viewers like this won't help this won't help the person who has no like one or two viewers because they're only gonna like assuming even if we assume all of those viewers pay for it um uh, it's still two versus like two thousands you know there's only so many boosts they could pay unless your viewers are like billionaires <laughs> it's not it's not really this system won't help anybody this will only cement the people who are already at the top. So, not great. Okay, moving on. So we're going to look at Sony for a bit. So this is uh, old news, kind of. Um, Sony is buying, or has bought, has acquired Bluepoint Games, who are behind the, the um, Shadow of the Colossus remake, and more recently the Demon Souls remake. So this, why I say it's old news, is that we kind of knew about this a while ago. Um, because Sony tweeted out a, a picture of them as, um, you know, PlayStation Cross Bluepoint Games at the same time when they had acquired Housemark. Um, and it is suggested that maybe somebody got the logos mixed up or whatever and they put it out the, put out the wrong tweet. But the fact that it existed in the first place, or that the image existed in the first place, um, would suggest that they were in talks or were just finalizing talks or whatever. But the thing is, we kind of knew already. <laughs> We kind of knew that they had bought them. Um, and it was already kind of assumed because Bluepoint Games for a long time now have been working almost exclusively on Sony-owned IPs. Um, they're behind a lot of the H they're behind the HD ports of God of War, which is a PlayStation-owned IP, and the HD ports of Metal Gear Solid, which is not a PlayStation-owned IP, but whatever, it's close enough. <laughs> And then the Shadow of the Colossus remake was PS4 exclusive, and the Demon's Souls remake is PS5 exclusive. So, you know, they were pretty much in Sony's pocket, or not in Sony's pocket, but hand in hand with Sony? Being fed by the... I don't know, some metaphor works there, but the point is... Yeah, they were kind of already there. Um, so, having like a press release and talking about it and so on... Um, Bluepoint have come out to say that our next project we're working on original content right now. We can't talk about what it is, but that's the next step in the evolution for us. It's important to note that it's original content and not original game or original IP or any of those things. Because there have been a lot of articles going around that have been saying that Bluepoint are going to be making their own game. And that quote doesn't necessarily mean that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to make their own IP. It doesn't necessarily mean they're making a brand new game and so on. Original content could be anything. You know, it could be DLC. It could be a new level. It could be a sequel. It could be so many other things. You know, there's there's a lot of things there. But yeah, not surprised that Sony have bought Bluepoint because we kind of assumed they had already done that. <laughs> okay, so continuing with companies doing trialing things that maybe they should think about a little bit more than not at all. Um, Sony has game trials feature to PS5. So this is kind of experimental at the moment because it's only available um, in select territories right now. But basically, if you jump to the Death Stranding Director's Cut uh, page on the store or Sackboy's Big Adventure on the store, you may or may not see a download trial button. And the download trial button, uh, as you might imagine, gives you access to a trial of the game. but. The real problem is, and as is pointed out by Wesley here, is that there is a pretty big catch to the trial. And the problem is, one, it's timer-based, so uh, you get about six hours for Death Stranding and I think five hours for Sackboy. And the problem is the timer starts as soon as you hit the download trial button. 
Not as soon as you launch the trial, as soon as you begin downloading it is when the trial starts. And if you're not on good internet, that might take more than six hours to actually download the thing and then you will have zero time to actually play the trial because it will have expired. This is the stupidest fucking thing they could possibly have done with it. So as Wesley has, says here, this is a maddening decision on Sony's part. I'm downloading the Death Stranding Trial. Yeah, no. Death Stranding Trial now, and my PS5 tells me it'll be nearly two hours before I've downloaded enough data to start, and then three hours until all data is downloaded. That means I'll have just a few hours of my trial left to play the game. So basically, if you actually wait for the whole thing to download, you've got one hour, maybe, to play the game. And if you have played Death Stranding from the beginning, there is no gameplay in the first hour. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of exposition in the first hour. So that's pretty much zero. Zero time to actually play the game. Um, Sackboy, maybe you'll get around with it because it's probably not as big a game, but it's still going to struggle with the same problem, which is you still got to download the thing. You know, it's still going to take time to actually download. Um, and that's eating into your trial period. It should really have begun from the moment you boot it. That's when the trial should start. Um, there is a workaround if you want to. It's kind of a bit shitty, but there is a workaround to do it. You basically, you make a dummy account. Um, download the trial on that account um, because multiple accounts can sit on the same console. You can then download it to the same console, swap back to your main account, click download trial on that. Since the trial has already been downloaded, you can just start from the, you know, start from the beginning of the timer. Um, like it's not a great workaround, but whatever. Now it does seem like it's in a trial period because it's only in like select territories, the UK. Um, I haven't seen it on my own one, so they've even distinguished it from UK and Ireland, which is odd, because they don't normally do that. Uh, it's usually we tend to be lumped into the UK for whatever reason. Um, we're not part of it, but for whatever reason, Sony seems to think we are. Anyway, this is bad practice. Um, like, if you don't have very good internet, it's entirely possible that the download in time to just have enough data to play the game might take more than the trial is. Plus the game they've chosen is probably not the best one because there's so very little. Even if you got right from the beginning Death Stranding six hours, you still have no idea what the game is about. Uh, it is very much front loaded with exposition and you're really just, you're still pretty much in the fucking tutorial of the game by then. It's a big game, very long game. I really like it. I know that people, some people don't, some people do. I quite enjoy it, but I would absolutely say six hours is not enough time to understand the game. Assuming you even get all six hours. Okay, last thing. So we're just gonna we're gonna laugh at eFootball for a bit because it always seemed like it was a terrible idea. Um, free to play uh, loot boxes and so on, but it has just been confirmed basically that it is also a shit game in, in its own right. It is launched with a bunch of bugs, a bunch of um, performance issues and so on, and just some hilarious faces. Like, this is only one of them, but there are so many around the internet just to check out. You may have even seen some of them. They are really bad. Um, there's, a, there's a tweet going around of one of the footballers running like Naruto with his arms behind his back, only they look like they're dislocated. <laughs> there's all sorts of other stupid shit, but basically Konami came out to say, yeah, uh, okay, we'll, we'll fix it. Please keep playing. Um, Konami apologizing for the sorry state the soccer simulation game shipped in. Uh, Konami acknowledged that there have been reports of problems users have experienced with cutscenes, facial expressions, movements of players, and the behavior of the ball. Meaning the ball actually doesn't fucking go anywhere, and sometimes it plays like a cube, and so on. Basically, they shipped it too early. Um, which is kind of odd, because there was no... As you may know, and I think I've mentioned before, eFootball is Pro Evolution Soccer, is what it's turned into. Just changed the name of the series, and turned it into a free-to-play shit show. Um, but that Pro Evolution Soccer took a break last year, so there was no new entry. And it was hoped that they were taking the break to improve it a good bit, so it could catch, one, catch up with FIFA, and then two, surpass it. <laughs> it seems like they decided to go the complete opposite direction and go for a money grab, which is very Konami right now. Um, the rest of this article, if you want to click into it, it just points out a bunch of stupid shit going around about 
eFootball and also pointing out it is currently, a time of recording, the worst game on Steam. <laughs> it has it has attracted the, the most negative reviews so far um, at time of recording. It is top of the list of the worst games on Steam, which it definitely isn't. There is some absolute shit on Steam. Um, some steaming shit on Steam, if you like. Um, but I guess it just highlights how... It highlights how frustrated some people are with the game, but obviously there's going to be a bit of a social media kind of flood of people just piling on the shit, so anyway. Alright, we'll finish off with some dumb stuff. So, the New World, or New World, um, Amazon's MMO came out this week, but I didn't mention it in new releases because <laughs> absolutely no fucking interest in it. You can play Final Fantasy XIV and continue having fun. But you cannot name yourself Jeff Bezos because uh, he'll, he'll hurt his fifis, I guess. Um, so Amazon is basically preventing people from naming their character Jeff Bezos or any kind of uh, strange spelling or, you know, interpretation thereof. You've got a character here, Jake Beesbors, uh, who apparently does work. It seems like it verifies it, but there is, like, in the fine print, it, you know, they can or they reserve the right to, you know, force you to change the name and so on. Why is this in dumb stuff? Because it's a, well, one, it's dumb, obviously. It's like, why? Why do you care, Jeff? Really? It, it doesn't make a diff fucking difference. But the reason is that they have these kind of name verification stuff, which is kind of difficult to do, especially for when people like take out letters and put in numbers or take out symbols that just look like letters and so on or misspellings or sound alikes and stuff like that and they've caught a lot of them now they didn't catch jake beesbors but they've caught a they've caught a lot of other stuff why can't they do that for twitch you know people making their accounts and it says some horrible shit right in the name like it's not even a funny spelling of it or anything it's some racist sexist bigoted shit just right there in the username but no, they've re they've reserved that for Jeff and his ego. Jeg, Jeg Bees Bors, it's hilarious. Uh, and Jeff Bezos is also one that apparently also got through. But anyway, it's just yes, it's dumb because why would a fucking richest man on the planet give a shit about this kind of thing? But also, Amazon owned Twitch, and they could have put this technology into that instead, and they're reserving it for. Fifi's. <sighs> right, there's a gaming mattress on the way. Not a gaming bed specifically, a, a mattress. Because <laughs> there already is a gaming bed. What about this suggests it's for gamers? Other than the branding, I suppose. That's probably about it. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's a gaming mattress. It's not necessarily over engineered. There's a bunch of different, like, um, mattress slices inside it that can be moved around or moved up and moved down so you can get the, the exact position you want or something like that. Uh, it's just fucking stupid gaming mattress. Why? It is kind of telling that it's a single, though. <laughs> it's not a, not a double. Not even a king. It's a, it's a, it's a single. <laughs> you get a single bed. Um, so this is the mattress specifically, not the bed. So they already sold the bed, and you could have put any mattress you wanted on it, but now there's a gaming mattress that is unnecessarily over-engineered. It doesn't have any, uh, like, fucking LEDs in it, though. So it's like, what's the point? Um... Anyway, I just thought it was fucking stupid, but there you go. A gaming, a gaming mattress to go with your gaming bed and your gaming chair that I'm sitting in. Shut up. And so on. And so. <laughs> Anyway, that was the news for 27th of September to the 3rd of October 2021. Let me know what you thought. Um, some Tokyo Game Show news. Gungrave, I never really gave it much thought. Like, it always seemed kind of... Whatever, I guess. I just didn't... I don't know. I just didn't pay too much attention to it. But that trailer looked fun. I think I'll definitely give it a more of a shot now. Um, Stranger of Paradise demo, or not demo, but the trailer is, is kind of interesting. Um, but some of the stuff that happens in the demo is actually kind of hilarious. There's a bit here you can see the main character actually has earbuds in. There's more to that cutscene that you should probably try to track down because it's hilarious. It's like genuinely hilarious. 
Yeah, I don't think it was meant to be, but it is. <laughs> this is so fucking funny. Um, and playing through the new area looks interesting. The new difficulty levels are definitely a help because it's, games can just get frustrating and sometimes they just don't feel fair. Um, and sometimes you just want to get through the level. You just, I just want to. I just want to get through this level. Put, I'll go back to the regular difficulty once I'm through here, kind of thing. Um, I think the casual difficulty is way too easy. Even the, the story mode, the easy mode, is still also kind of too easy. It's like... There should be a middle ground somewhere between normal and easy. Give me the middle ground that is I'm busy, and I want a challenge, but I don't want to have to keep doing this over and over again. It's like... Once, once I've been killed by this thing in the exact same way five times, just let me just let the fucking skip it. <laughs> I don't know. I'll be interested to play it. Um, it does feel a lot like Neo, but there is a lot of extra shit going on behind the behind the scenes. Monster Hunter Rise on PC will be a big uh, help for that series. Not that I really needed the help, but Capcom have kind of mentioned that they are starting to look at PC as their main platform going forward. And just looking at porting it to, to other consoles, which I don't blame them. Because um, they've actually been doing pretty well on PC. So hopefully we'll see that in the future. Sony have been thinking about doing that themselves. Not necessarily making it their main platform, but definitely looking at pushing their games out to PC. So, and Xbox have been doing that anyway. You know, a lot of their games are already on PC as well. So that will be interesting. Um, Resident Evil 4 VR, I'm really annoyed that it's an Oculus Quest 2 exclusive. I, I don't want to go back to Facebook. I don't want to ever be associated with it again. Um, and I know there's like a shadow account there or whatever, and I could just put my email in and they'd somehow know everything about me and it would be fine, but I don't want to. I, I, I'm still hoping that they'll be forced to divest from it, but that's probably never gonna happen. But anyway, we'll see. Um, and then, so it's kind of small or not small, slow, slow news. Slow news for industry stuff. The Twitch stuff is pretty good. Um, their boost trial is not a good idea, as far as, as, far as I'm concerned. Um, Sony's trial thing needs a rethought on, you know, things take time to download and not everybody has a good download um, speed, self included. Um, what else? What else happened? <laughs> I can't even remember. E-football, whatever. I just wanted to laugh at the faces, to be honest. Um, and Sony buying Bluepoint, we kind of, we kind of already knew it was sort of expected at this point. They were pretty much, they might as well have been a first party um, studio all this time because it's kind of felt like they were anyway. Anyway, um, yeah, that was the news. Let me know what you thought. Click down there and make a comment and boost me on, on Twitch, you fucks. <laughs> Even though I haven't been on that in months, that might change. Um, elsewhere on the channel, continuing Plague Tale, probably finish it either this week or next week. Um, and I've decided that the game to come after that for October will be Observer System Redux. Um, I know I mentioned that it was going to be Vampire last week, but looking into it, that game's longer than I remembered. Like, like considerably longer than I remembered. But there's no way I'll get it done in time for Halloween, and that's kind of what I want for the October one. I kind of want to do a spooky game, so... We're gonna do Observer instead, which is a first person kind of puzzle game, kind of narrative thing, but it is creepy as fuck. Uh, a lot of body horror, a lot of psychological stuff going on. It's pretty good. I really like it. Um, and I don't have the platinum for it. So I'm gonna try to work on that. Um, I've tried a couple of times. You'll see if you decide to, to, to watch it that the one trophy I'm missing is a big pain in the fucking hole. Anyway. Check that out, please. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Mm -hmm.